Well, you've already given us quite a little playbook here, <laughs> which is a perfect segue into our little game section, which I'm going to call story time. Welcome back. Everyone gather around. We're going to do a little bit of a story time. You released an EP a couple years back. It was called The Book of Royale. So we're gonna we're gonna instead of maybe like singing it we're gonna journal right like mental journal <laughs> what's the word i'm looking for we're gonna vocalize we're gonna vocalize okay. okay so question number one if you were writing the book of royale what would you title this chapter of your life i already started writing the movie y'all <laughs> She's like, okay. I'm two steps ahead of you. Like, Tim Burton's gonna direct it. I want it to be shot like Sin City. Yeah. The story's so wild. Um, this chapter, though, like your your current chapter. Now? Yeah, what would you title it? I don't have time for your BS. Yes. <laughs> That's what it's titled. Me, me too. Me too, absolutely. <laughs> That's where I'm at in life as well. <laughs> So we have the, the first chapter. Yeah. What picture of yourself would you use as the book cover? Of course, I would use one of the Sequoia Emanuel photos that I just shot with Sequoia Emanuel. Mm. Shout out to Sequoia. She is a powerhouse female photographer and she just shot um, People's Choice Awards. Wow. She's killing it. She just shot Dita Von Tees and. Ooh, I'm excited um, to see this. Yes. So that would be the book cover shot, 100%. Yes. Or you would just bring her in for like a separate book cover shoot. Okay. Yeah. Jot that one down, Sequoia. <laughs> um, okay. Is there a chapter of your life not many people know about? Have you ever worked an odd job or have a secret hobby that you've never really shared? Yeah. <laughs> I want to hear. <laughs> I want to hear about the secret life of Royale. I've been lying about it for for years. <gasps> no one knows. You don't have to say if you don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> um. It, well, like I mentioned before, my side job, right? Mm -hmm. I'll reveal that it is downtown LA. Okay. And it is a late night job. Okay. Okay. Do you have any weird hobbies? I love to sew. I love to sew. rhinestone. I actually made this jacket. Did you? Yeah. Wow, you sewed the whole thing. Is that connected? Like, or no, that's your dress. I sewed this. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, it kind of goes together. I mean, this is a little janky. This was last minute, but. Um, Wait, yeah, Hakeem, can we get a shot of the whole outfit? Because she just looks amazing head to toe. The boots are, are amazing too. <laughs> but growing up in a dance studio, we tend to like rhinestone everything. And I like to just put my own sauce yeah. on whatever I'm wearing. I love that. Sewing, um, what else? Um, Anything that we would never guess by looking at you? I learned how to shoot a gun. Really? Yes. That's a good skill. That's mm -hmm. a good life skill. I mean, if you're ever in that situation, like now you know. Yeah. Well, and also for movies, like I want to be an assassin yes. or like a detective or whatever. Um, Kill Bill mm -hmm. type shit. Yes. So ladies learn how to shoot. I own a 19 now. Yeah. Bang, bang. All <laughs> right. So we talked about this a little bit earlier. So I think I know what you're going to say, but maybe I'm wrong. Which chapter do you think changed you the most throughout your life? I think losing my mom yeah. definitely to suicide. That was, it'll, for the rest of my life, it'll be the hardest thing to work through. Yeah. Yeah. And you said you didn't see it coming at all or? No, I mean, her and I always had our issues, but I don't think anybody really expects. Yeah. I mean, unless someone's talking about it all the time. I, I myself have lost two really close friends to suicide, um, mm -hmm. back to back pretty much. And uh, they were friends. It kind of attacked like my whole friend group at one point. Like it was mm -hmm. like, and that's an epidemic too, which mm -hmm. is, um, I don't know the exact word for it, but I, th I think it's called like group suicides. It's like mm. when it starts to happen within a friend group yeah. and it's, um, it's devastating. Like it, it forever changed me too. I mean, I can't imagine if it was my mom, that's next level. Like that is like, 
the most painful thing, but I do relate to you. And like, I, I know what it's like. It's extremely painful. And it's first, I mean, for us too, like I was, I was like, no way, like mm. that could not happen to these people who are like so full of life and happy, like driven, goal oriented. Like it was like, it's really, really scary how oh, yeah. it can just in, in like a flash, like it's, it's, yeah. it's definitely like that's a cause that's like special in my heart too so yeah I feel like I throughout the years I've never been able to start a foundation or do the work within a foundation just because it's healing and then dealing with my two brothers has been so devastating yeah. that I feel like when I'm older I'll be able to dive into the work yeah. like the foundational work and like the public speaking um but that's also like my advice to anyone that's lost a loved one like this is like one day at a time mm -hmm. and whatever works for you for the self-healing and yeah you know the therapy and everything it's like everyone's so different how we heal from it and it's not linear yeah like i'm sure you have your days where it's just like you don't even really think about it and other days it just hits you like a train That's yeah so true it's really like yeah and it's, it's never ending like it's always going to be there it's always going to be a part of you but yeah i think finding ways to honor them and honor the memories and stuff like that's that's really all you can do yeah i always talk to her and and like she's like my chris jenner like up in heaven and yeah. i'm like let's do this mom like <laughs> i feel like she's always like you know either yelling at me or helping me. Do you ever get any signs? Like she comes to me in my dreams and I've had therapy about it because it's so intense. Like it's very like physically real, like wow. lucid. Uh -huh. And sometimes I have to ask her to not visit me because it's... It's too unsettling, yeah. Yeah, it takes me like two or three days to recover sometimes because she'll like walk into my apartment and just physically be there. And I can like touch her and I don't, I don't prefer those types of dreams it's right. too intense um but other people tell me that she comes to them as well so many people have stories with my mom visiting wow. them have you gone to like a medium or anything absolutely yeah mm -hmm. and she's come through and wanted to chat and stuff yeah um shout out to angela lavelle lovell angela lovell and um kimberly they both have um counseled me through the heavier encounters yeah um, Angela is like a medium clairvoyant, so she um, she had a reading with me, and it took her two days to get rid of my mom. It was like this heater on her chest. Wow! And um, her like witchy partner lady at the time called her, and she was like, "Do you have an attachment on your body right now?" And she's like, "Yes." And she will not go away. Like, Aww. my mom is so invasive. Like, it's happened with a few different people. Wow. In my life. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, it's interesting because it's like some people go to those situations and like they won't even come through. And your mom's mm. like, no, I'm here to stay. She's here, yeah. <laughs> that is too funny. Well, mm. I'm glad that you have had that experience at least and hopefully gotten a little bit of closure. Yeah. Um, last question. We obviously can't see into the future, but if you could write the rest of your life story, describe the perfect ending. And I'm also gonna use this as a little bit of a, a manifestation moment, since mm -hmm. it is two, 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 two. Like, I kind of just want you to speak into the universe right now, like what you would, what you want. Okay, so I want like a huge hot pink mansion, yes. but like Kat Von D style. And like when you walk in, it's just like thousands of women like doing their own little like entrepreneurial job like within the company. Yes. So I just want to have a ton of women working together in this huge mansion and we just are like this magical team that like we can do music videos or TV shows or movies or whatever it is. And and we're just like happy and in our power and we all have our own money and our own you know, and we're protected and safe yes. and just enjoying being performers and artists without, like, a man. A man, period. <laughs> <laughs> Sentence ends there. Yeah. <laughs>